For the downward dog walks, you're going to raise your hips high in the sky with the hands and feet at shoulder width, and you're going to take turns stretching one leg out. We're not trying to force anything here, we're just trying to ease into this position. You can rock back and forth, keep the quads flexed to straighten that leg out, but just take turns walking the dog, keep the hands actively engaged in the ground. For the puppy pose, you're going to let those arms go forward, drop the hands and shoulders and chest into extension. Then you're going to let the hips rise up. So you still get a 90 degree bend at the knees. You're going to allow as much of an arch in that low back as possible and just sink into this. Breathe, exhale, move around a little bit. Don't make this a super passive position, but use the breath to pull and engage more range of motion in those tissues. For the knee hug egg rolls, you're going to rock that spine into as much of a rounded flex position as possible, trying to make a smooth rolling surface. You're going to rock back and forth. So you want to Think about tucking the chin, tucking the head, and get the back to round, and that way you can roll. You want to be able to roll all the way back from your shoulders, all the way up to your feet, without any type of thudding. If your back is stiff, you may feel like you get stuck and you're trying to go over a flat surface. We want to make sure this is round and smooth. As you do this more, you'll be able to get to that more flexed position, but just start with what you can do and exhale as you move. The Sphinx Pose is a bit of a spinal extension. Now this can be sensitive for some people who haven't been able to move well. And I want you to think about, instead of just pressing your back into an extended position, I want you to think about lengthening through the hips. You can start in the elbows or you can press up in the arms. But I really want you to press those glutes, squeeze the glutes, and extend that hip so you're feeling a lengthening through the front of the anterior chain. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but ease into this with the breath. For the standing lateral pelvic tilt, you're going to balance with your feet at shoulder width and you're going to sink left and right into the hips. Now this is going to look interesting if you're doing this, but watch in front of a mirror and try to get as much motion in those hips as you drop left and right. We're trying to restore some motion to the pelvic floor and the bottom of that spine. Then for the pelvic tilt, you're going to bring that hip into anterior and posterior pelvic tilt. We're trying to rock back and forth. The legs are going to stay straight on this one, and you're going to hold onto the rim of the pelvis and just shift the hips back and forth. Squeeze the glutes and try and see as much how much range of motion you can get as we do this. This is going to be a simple thing, but if we don't ever move those hips, we can't restore any circulation to the area. For the standing pelvic circles, we're trying to bring some circulation and articulation back to the pelvis. Now, this is going to be a little bit more of a coordinated movement, but I want you to think about smooth, slow, and in many ways, sensual movements. You're trying to bring some motion back to your hips. This is how we get our dancing hips back. And a lot of this involves coordination at the muscles at the base of our spine and our pelvic floor and our femur to get rotation and articulation in a coordinated manner. So focus on this. For the Jefferson curls, we're going to work on getting that spinal flexion. So this is going to be something that most people feel really stiff. I know I feel stiff in the morning when I start this, so you're going to ease into it. That's the full range of motion, but for many people, you'll start just getting the upper back. Really think about the head and the neck. Start with that chin, tuck it, get a little bit of range of motion, keep the legs straight. Start to feel that back open up as you get a little bit more into it each rep. You're going to ease into it, breathe, sink a little bit lower, a little bit lower, a little bit lower each time and get to that bottom position and reach towards the ground. But you will feel discomfort at the back of the legs. Don't let the legs bend. Actively flex the quads into this position and pull yourself down. This will open up and change dramatically. And as you get through this, you'll start to feel much more open because your body is no longer fighting that stiff posterior chain.